off the streets of Saskatoon vanished. There's been numerous sightings um, that range from Ontario to BC. She did tell me once, Mom, there are some really bad people here. was the oldest, is the oldest. She definitely liked things to go her way. Always uh, fiery, did what she wanted, followed her own drum, dreadlocks, made her own pants. <laughs> Just, I guess, the role model in being who you are, not giving a crap what other people think of you. Nathan was born December 21st, 2006. It was the love of her life. She was so excited to see him. She named him Nathan, which was such a different name, but that's Candace. She wanted something really different. We went out to get a goldfish, and I was super excited, even though I didn't really understand it. It was a nice little tour, but it's like one of the happiest moments I remember, because it's one of the very few moments where it was just me and her happy together. The ground was falling out from under her and she was struggling and she had no place to live. And I, I still struggle because would this not have happened had I helped her? I don't know. The report actually came into our service centre uh, initially from her boyfriend at the time. The belief early on is that the misinformation was being cast by one person in the investigation for whatever reason, whether it's to cover up for their own doings or to cover up for somebody else or because maybe they heard this misinformation and they were just spreading it. Every second counts. And so I think that's the problem that we ran into early on is just like sifting through fountains of misinformation. It would be not uncommon for people living that transient lifestyle to not speak with somebody for a week or two weeks. That was another unique aspect about it as well is that Lots of people in that world don't report people missing. They don't care. They're addicted to drugs. Seeing her riding her bike on video and I'm thinking, how is that humanly possible? In today's day and age, with video footage, with people always around downtown, that this beautiful woman just disappeared.
In Saskatoon, um, numerous parts of the city have been searched. Along the riverbank, we had a search party out from Buckwell Bridge all the way up to uh, the water treatment plant, landfill north of town, uh, residences, farmyards. There's been numerous sightings um, that range from Ontario to BC, uh, which our team has always followed up on to see where she went missing from, uh, the location she was living, and she was in the downtown core. Uh, the investigators checked various video, various, um, talked to various people in that location to see where she had been in the last 24, 48 or a week before. Over 100 people have been interviewed in regards to this investigation and some have been interviewed multiple times. Candace had um, a significant other who has been investigated and spoken to. Uh, we still have other suspects involved with this also. A couple key pieces that we are looking for is one, Candace's body. Candace herself alive, that would be great, at least where her body is. Two, the bike that she was using. Where is that bike? Sometimes the very little piece that people think that police already know, we may not have, and that little piece might crack the case. Kasten, what do we think your mom is now? Um, an angel in heaven. I see a lot of her in them, especially in Kasten, the spunk and the fire and the... He's got his mom's eyelashes, which people remind him every day. I just wish she could be here. She'd be so proud of her little ones. I miss seeing her eyes light up around her children and um, that contagious laugh and her beautiful smile. Why don't we get an angel ornament for each of the kids and that's what we're gonna start to do is hang an ornament on the tree for mom on Christmas Eve. So that's what we've been doing for four Christmases now. It's like your new normal. You're in this like cycle of grief that you're angry and you're in denial and then you try to do acceptance but you can't get out of the cycle because there's like no closure, there's no answer to it but you still have that like little piece of hope. I wish you, she would come home, but I know there's a strong chance that she never will, but I've learned to kind of deal with it and to understand it. I think we're so far past the point of like wanting justice for it that yeah. we just, we just want, we just want an answer. I have a strong faith in God and I feel strongly that Candace is an angel in heaven, but it would be nice to know that that's for sure. I don't know how else to put it because it's, uh, we just want to bring her home. Somebody knows what happened to Candace. We can't confirm it, uh, but our information that we have is that uh, whatever happened to Candace happened in Saskatoon or close by, and we believe her body is somewhere close. It's very frustrating when we know that the information is there and people just need to come forward. Some people have come forward with information in the past. Uh, we'd like to speak with them again, but we'd like to speak to them directly to clarify some certain things. a secret for the last four years. Undoubtedly that secret is eating you up and the sooner you can give us that information the sooner we can bring Candace back. If it was your sister or your mother or your child would you not want that answer? Have some humanity come forward. This is four years of these little people's lives not being able to wrap their arms around their mother or not to say I love you mom. I think our family has waited long enough. They suffered long enough. They've hung enough angels on that tree. <laughs>